hello and welcome to this first video in our latest series, Algorithmic Trading and Investing with the Darwin API. Now, just like other financial assets such as equities, FX, commodities, indices, etc., Darwin quotes offer information that, when analyzed individually or together with information from other Darwins, represent data sets that can be exploited for potential profit by both the trader behind the Darwin and potential investors. Now, as firm believers in the value of this information that's present in our community data set, we offer access to both the data itself and an ever-growing suite of APIs to enable data-savvy members of our community, algorithmic traders, data scientists, quants, quant developers, or anyone with an idea to tap into it. The Darwin API enables clients to create their own trading applications or robots to trade dynamic asset and risk-weighted investments, aka Darwin's, at DarwinX. Clients can use our APIs in any programming language of their choice, uh, subject to its supporting connection to and authentication via a RESTful web service that we've set up for them. At the present time, this video being recorded on the 3rd of April 2019, our offering consists of the following APIs. The Darwin Info API, which provides both the latest snapshot and historical time series for Darwin quotes and investment attributes. The Investor Account Info API, which retrieves information from your investor account, such as current status, current and past investments, open and closed trades, executed, rejected, canceled, conditional orders, etc. Then we have the Darwin Trading API that provides an interface to manage your Darwin investments. You can buy or sell new or existing Darwins, configure conditional orders, modify your account leverage, etc. The WebSockets API provides you the ability to subscribe to a WebSocket whereby all product quote updates can be retrieved in real time by subscribed applications. And finally, the Darwin Quotes API that allows you to stream Darwin quote data directly into your application in real time. To use any of the available Darwin X APIs, clients must first obtain a valid access token. Once obtained, uh, this access token must be embedded in an authorization header to perform calls to any of our APIs successfully. Such an authorization header will typically look like the following structure, where authorization is the key and the text bearer followed by a space and your access token is the value. Currently, there are two options for obtaining an access token. You could request a direct access token directly from our support team, or you can request access and refresh tokens directly from your application via OAuth2, client credentials for which can be supplied by our support team. Please note that the access token permits usage of the APIs for only a specific user and a single environment, real or demo. Documentation detailing the technical specification of each API in the offering can be found on the DarwinX API store, the central hub of information for developers using the API. At the present time, this information is publicly accessible by visiting api.darwinx.com forward slash store. That's api.darwinx.com forward slash store. Each API listing in the store has an API console tab that lists and describes its available methods. The information displayed on the API console tab is based on the Swagger 2.0 specification. Shortly, we'll go through each of the APIs in existence at the present time, and go through each and every use case and endpoint available in terms of functionality to date. There are two main environments, production and sandbox. And both environments show the same real information about Darwin's. The production environment allows access to real investor accounts, and the sandbox environment allows access to demo investor accounts. Each API shows on the first overview tab the URLs to use for production and sandbox environments, respectively. Please note that the latest version of any API will usually contain the default URL, which is the one without a version number as well as the URL containing the version number. In the advent of any updates to the APIs, the version number will be incremented and consequently any existing access tokens may not remain valid for newer API versions. Hence, you'll need to request new access tokens for the same 
or re-request them through your applications. To prevent unexpected issues while using the API, it is recommended to use the URL with the version number for which the application is prepared. All listed APIs can also be used directly via the API console tab. You'll need to enter your access token in the set request header text field at the beginning of the page, select the method you'd like to use, and fill the corresponding fields, clicking try it out at the end. Remember that clicking on try it out on this page after entering your access token is actually sending the request live. The execution report also provides an example of a request for the method using curl in a terminal. Now let's go through each of the available APIs, their API console tabs, and explore the functionality available to users via the Darwin API. To start things off, visit api.darwinx.com forward slash store. Once you enter this page, you'll see all the APIs listed here that are currently available for you to access. They have some features common to all of them, and these include the, the version number as well as the status information that you can see at the top of the page anytime you visit an API listing here. So the version number at the top, latest update timestamp, and the current status of the API. Underneath, you'll find three tabs, Overview, API Console, and Documentation. The Overview tab will list the production and sandbox endpoints for the API in question, along with a brief description of what the API is intended for. Now going into the API console for the Darwin Info API provides you endpoints that enable you to download any data that is otherwise publicly available on a Darwin listing on the platform. This includes product names, a product here being a Darwin. So you can download a list of all Darwins present in the exchange. You can filter by what status of Darwin you'd like to request, those being active, pending, or deleted, or an all, the default um, option is all. You can also paginate your output, paginate your query, and receive paginated responses. There is also a post request available to slash products that allows you to filter for certain Darwins, uh, basically curate a list of Darwins based on criteria you can define in terms of, at the present time, return, drawdown, number of investors, trades, trader equity, return drawdown, divergence, stays in Darwin X, current investment, etc. Moving on to the remainder of the endpoints, you can also download data in terms of candlesticks. So you can find candles for a particular Darwin. You can search for the period selected of the product using from and to epoch timestamps for the search. Candles available, available are of type one minute, five minute, 15, 30, one hour four hours, one day, one week, and one month. You can also find candles for a particular time frame. Other endpoints include the ability to get both current information and historical information. So for instance, you have get requests here, uh, endpoints that permit get requests for getting the current score, current D score of the Darwin. You can also get an array of all, the evolution of all attributes of the Darwin specified by slash history slash badges. So here executing an instruction here will return a time series of all scores as they have evolved over time. And this uh, time series also includes information on D periods as opposed to just the attributes. Moving on to the remainder, you can once again have a historical time series made available to you via a particular endpoint. So let's, for instance, assume you wanted just the close strategy evolution over time. You could request it from here. Same goes for any other attribute for which you'd like historical data that includes close strategy, duration consistency, experience, losing consistency, market correlation, performance, open strategy, scalability, etc. Risk adjustment. If you'd like historical quotes, you can access those via the slash history slash quotes um, endpoint. And again, this endpoint takes a start and end timestamp, permitting you to tailor the period over which you'd like the data for. A note on this particular endpoint in terms of the precision of information you get. Depending on the amount of data you've requested, the range over which you've requested the data, the resolution of the data will change. Lastly, you also have endpoints here for the remainder of the attributes, historical attributes, the current monthly divergence, the status of the product, 
the current score and attributes. Again, this is the most recent timestamp worth of all the information in terms of attributes that is available uh, for this Darwin, for the Darwin in question or for the Darwins, uh, if you're looking at a portfolio. And of course, the current scores for the product in terms of experience, market correlation, risk stability, et cetera, all 12 investment attributes. Let's move on to the next API. The Darwin Quotes API, again, is in version 1.0, and its API console has simply one endpoint, that's slash quotes. The purpose of this API is to permit you to get a stream of product quote updates for the Darwins you've requested. So for instance, you could provide a list of product names, for instance, NTI.4.12, for instance, for subscription. If you don't provide uh, the Darwins in the list, then you will be subscribed to all products. And that will then ensure a stream of information in real time, quote information delivered to you via the Darwin Quotes API. Let's move on to the next API, which is the Darwin Trading API. The Darwin Trading API has the following features available for you to access. Firstly, you can post a request to your investor account that permits you to raise conditional orders. You can also update existing conditional orders via these endpoints and even cancel existing conditional orders. Other endpoints include the ability to get the current leverage, update the current leverage, buy, buy a Darwin at a current quote, um, sell a product at the current quote, order a stop out for the specified investor account in this endpoint, order a stop out for the specified Darwin, and lastly, an endpoint that allows you to get a summary of all currently available operations on Darwin products. Let's move on to the next API, which is the Investor Account Info API. Under API console, we have a few endpoints again, get requests that allow you to get information about any of your active investor accounts and what's going on in them. So get forward slash investor accounts gets you a list of your active investor accounts, further endpoints to get details about a specific investor account, list all pending conditional orders, list executed conditional orders, rejected, cancelled conditional orders, uh, search functionality to allow you to search for a particular order by ID, list your current open positions, list all replica orders already executed. You can also find an order by its ID. You can list closed trades and get a list of open trades as well as find a trade by its ID. Lastly, with the quote WebSocket API, it's very simply an interface that permits you to subscribe an application to one or more product quotes. So once connected to the WebSocket, it's possible to subscribe uh, to any number of Darwins following the format and information provided to you on this page. So that concludes our getting started with the Darwin API segment here in the algorithmic trading and investing with the Darwin API series. In future videos, we'll go through extensively each API in detail following implementation, describing how to go about not only implementing the functionality in the API consoles as we've seen today, but also from perspectives of both investors and traders who wish to trade the Darwin asset or portfolios of Darwin assets algorithmically. We'll go through several use cases of how to engineer a solution for yourself where you can not only get download Darwin data into your solution, you can also execute functionality relevant to trading Darwin's, not only from a Darwin investor's perspective, but also from a trader's perspective. For instance, we've spoken a lot about how the Darwin API is in fact as useful to traders as it is to Darwin investors, traders who may or may not be trading Darwin assets. In future videos, we'll go through this in a lot more detail and show how traders can access proprietary community data in this way via the Darwin API and use it to their advantage in following the markets. Thank you for your patience. And if you enjoyed this video and are looking forward to the rest of this series, please do consider sharing this video on your social networks with colleagues, friends, and coworkers, or anyone else whom you think would benefit from it. And we look forward to any feedback you may have on the subject, any additional features that you'd like based on what you've seen in the API consoles today, or any other feedback as regards implementation, help, 
FAQs, etc., please do feel free to comment below this video or send us an email at info at darwinx.com where we're always happy to hear from you and provide feedback and solutions accordingly. Thank you very much and see you next time.